it started raining really back in towards the end of September. We've barely had a dry day since. So what we've got here is that the soil's washed down, the farmer is in the distance trying to sort the soil out. It's less than ideal conditions, farmers lifting the ground, and this is the remnant soil erosion of a very difficult winter. What we have here is we have mud that's on the highway and the farmer has come out and cleaned the mud and deposited it on the side. This sand is the fraction that has been, the heavier fraction of the soil that has settled out. The finer organic matter and topsoil is washed further away and you can see there's quite a large amount of soil that has actually been cleared here. Um, and this soil here is going to have to be removed, either put back on the field or go to landfill. I'm just walking along the stream now and what I can see downstream of the, the fields is there's mud on the side of the, the watercourse, there's mud that's been deposited quite a lot and as we look down we can also see there's a lot of mud that's been deposited in the watercourse. And if I just get the spec to show you, this is well, sand actually, it's just been deposited which would normally be gravels. What this has done, this has smothered the aquatic life and normally these streams are quite rich in wildlife and so the, what we've learned from this is not only is there an impact on the road, there's also quite a big impact on the wildlife of the watercourse. This field here uh, is an, an arable field in a, a, a cereal vegetable livestock rotation so the farmer has wheat, barley, sheep, fodder beet. Last year this was in vegetables. The, the crop was lifted and harvested before Christmas. It was too wet to do anything about uh, remediating the soil so when the crop was harvested it was very wet, it caused a lot of, of wheel ruts and, and subsequently we had the, the very wet weather and a lot of soil got washed off the field. This part of the field has got uh, a bit of a soil erosion channel on it. Um, the field's been cultivated just over here but this bit hasn't been cultivated yet and so we can see the, the gully that was formed by all the runoff that came down the hill and you can see how the water has just washed away the topsoil onto this hard subsoil and this, this is actually pretty dense this subsoil. Uh, here we are. Um, it's, it's not the bedrock but it, so the subsoil is actually pretty dense here um, and you can see the boundary between the topsoil and the subsoil here if I just uh, put the spade in and let's just see what happens here can you see this so let's just scrape this off this is when we have subsoil compaction water if this was better soil structure might soak through this topsoil and then it's but then it's going to hit this next layer which is dense so the soil has been cultivated here by ploughing and forming vegetable beds and what have you and then you've got this layer here and this is so this might have okay soil structure and uh, hasn't at the moment but um, at other times and but then the water can't get through the subsoil so this is the first day now that we've had some sunshine where we, the farmer can cultivate the ground to lift some of the, foot, the soil and get some air back into it and try and do some remediation. It's actually loosening the soil quite nicely. What we have here, which is quite interesting, is that we have a, a bed of parsnips that have not been harvested and um, they've been uh, mist and so we can look at the soil in the bed before harvesting but then adjacent to this bed we've got a bed that was harvested you've got to remember this bed was formed uh, about 12 months ago last spring and the parsnips were, were sown into the bed it's a deep bed and it should have lovely soil to enable a lovely forming parsnip um, that is not deformed it's, it's good for the supermarket and if we just have a look to see what's going on, uh, 
the spade, spade goes in quite nicely and I'm just going to lever it back. In this bed that hasn't been harvested, what we can see here is that the soil structure it is actually quite nice. This hasn't had traffic on it, the bed was formed last year and the soil is open and not compacted and allows water to drain through the soil. In fact the, the soil is actually quite damp because water is penetrating the soil. So in contrast I'm coming onto this bed now that had a harvester over it where the, the parsnips have been lifted and just want to show you the, the difference so in, in the soil structure with the Let's just take that out. So can you see here, this is, this is had a, a harvester and I've put, deliberately put the spade in probably where the track has gone. And you can see the soil is just dense, hard. Um, no permeability in the soil because it'd be compressed and you can smell it because you can smell rotting um, vegetable here. It doesn't smell too nice. The w water just cannot soak into this because the soil has been squeezed down and it's just it needs a lot of force to break it apart. Um, and it's impermeable. And the reason why this occurs is because it's the weight of the machinery on soft soil. If this was on a, a dry soil, then the weight would make no difference. It's the fact that it's wet and, and damp, that this is very tender, the soil. And so the slightest amount of pressure squeezes it down. But I've got some dry soil that I've picked up here that's dried out, and I squeeze that and it doesn't compact. And this is quite important. See, I'm squeezing dry soil, and dry soil's got huge bearing strength. Look at this. In fact, when soil is dry, what happens is it's just brittle and it doesn't compact, it just falls apart. And so uh, dry soil's got bearing strength, whereas a, a, a moist soil, it's got no bearing strength. And the soil moisture between the two might not be that much, but it makes all the difference to the risk of compaction. Dry soils are fine. But of course, these har parsnips were harvested before Christmas in a wet time, and so it's bound to cause compaction, and we're bound to have a problem. And it's what we do about it is the issue. So we've just had um, a five minute shower, a bit of a, some rain, but barely anything. And it's wetted the soil up and just come back out again. And what is remarkable, just literally five minutes of rain, a shower, and how the water's just perched on this compacted soil. And you can see, if you look down the slope there, how the water is glistening and the water is just not soaking in into the compaction. So that's just in five minutes. If it carried on raining, it wouldn't take long before we'd have runoff going down, down the slope. This bit is interesting because this is just being cultivated recently and what you can see is how the, the soil is drying out on the surface. In, in the West Country, we call this pitching off. And it's important because when the soil is pitched off, it is more weatherproof because the soil is dried and more resistant to rainfall. Um, if, if rain falls on freshly tilled ground, it slumps more readily. But this here, it, when it dries, the soil becomes more stable. And of course, you want the soil to dry out if you're going to plant the next crop. So what can we learn from this? Uh, what are the lessons? And I think the real problem with this is scale at the end of the day. It's heavy machinery, large fields, uh, lo loads of rain, and all coming together creating soil compaction where the soil can't absorb the rainfall, it then runs off and causes a problem off-site. You can't farm in an ideal world, and it's all about trying to find a compromise and find a solution.